Hello and welcome to another video on PyQ to on the Mad Pony Interactive channel. And in this video we're going to look at uh, Q Painter, the paint event, so that we can overwrite the paint event on a button, in our case, on this tutorial today. We're going to look at save and restore, as well as how we can use style sheets in conjunction with the paint event. Okay, let's start with a small example I put together for us. Uh, I'm just importing everything here so that I don't have to worry about it like I did in the previous video. Uh, I'm, I'm doing a Q widget for our app and I'm creating a, a, its layout to be a horizontal box layout and then I'm creating three buttons, three Q push buttons with text in them, button one, two and three and then to the main layout because the layout is already added to the widget to the main layout I'm adding the three buttons and then I'm just executing our app down here. Even though we're using buttons in this video, uh, the concepts are the same for any other class that has an abstract class. Uh, I'm talking about this because uh, we're gonna we're gonna look at a push button and Q abstract button, which is super class of Q push button. And the main the main reason I'm talking about this is because Q abstract button doesn't have a paint event, so it's ideal. Uh, for us to pick up a Q abstract button and create our own paint event. Now let's ask the question, when do we use Q abstract button and when do we use Q push button or any other uh, subclass of Q abstract button like these guys over here? There's two answers for this question. Uh, the first one is, do you need anything? F let's look at push button. Do you need anything that push button offers you? Because it, it's exactly the same thing as Q abstract button, but it offers you some other options here, okay? Like setting a menu, for example. You can add a menu to a push button. Same thing goes to a tool button. So if you don't need any of this stuff that is offered to you by push button or, or any of the other class subclasses of Q abstract button, then why not use Q abstract button? Now, the second answer is if you're not just coding your app, if you're using Q Designer and you're planning on promoting your push buttons in Q Designer, for example, to an abstract button, uh, that, that's not an option. Q abstract button is not in here. Okay, it's not a promotable widget. You cannot promote it to abstract button. But there is an option where you can do your customized your your own custom button from a Q abstract button and add it to Q Designer. That option we'll speak about in the next video. That option is to place your button here in the widget box as a plugin. So we're going to start by looking at uh, the paint event on a class that already has a paint event. So this second button, I'm going to make it uh, call it just button and use this class up here. Let me just uh, initialize it up here like that. So I'm just catching the args and we should have the same result as the other buttons, as you can see button to exactly the same because we're catching the arcs like that. But now we're going to catch the paint event. If I catch the paint event and return the paint event, I'm going to have exactly the same result. Okay. The thing is, I'm returning the paint event, the paint event that is already happening inside a Q push button. If I don't return the paint event, then it doesn't get painted, so we don't see anything. So basically now I have a clean slate where I can paint whatever I need in here text and all that stuff it's gone now so I gotta rewrite everything I don't know if I'm gonna need to initialize anything so I can get rid of my init my init function and it still works make it a bit cleaner now the QPaint event returns two things rect and region and these are the areas that need to be updated this is quite useful for us because it tells us the size of uh, the current size of our button so if I just grab rect and print it out you can see the size of my button down here and as I change the size of the window his width is changing his height is not changing because it gets initialized as a fixed height but you can see the width is changing even though we don't see it now getting back to this uh, returning the the superclass paint event if I return the superclass paint event it's always gonna paint on top of whatever I paint so it's probably going to end up not using it. So I'll remove that. Now, in order to paint, we need a painter. We, got, we need to call the paint company and order, order a painter. So let's do that. Okay, now we got a painter. And we're already telling the painter uh, where to paint. And we're going to paint in self, which is the Q push button. Uh, 
another way to do this uh, especially if you want to catch the event by checking if it's active and if if it worked is by is by doing this instead and then later on down here we would use end after painting everything in here uh, because you're not printing this anywhere to a PDF or anything like that we can use just that Cube Painter has a nice method called Fill Rect and Fill Path and we can use that to display to visually see how where our button is supposed to be drawing one way to initialize it is by calling the rect that we want to get filled and I'm just gonna call this guy an R and a color so if I do this is the rect and now we can we have a visual representation of our button right there in fact I'm gonna use a, a gradient preset make it prettier let's talk about style sheets you might want to use a style sheet on your button and if I come down here I'm, I'm setting a style sheet with a border right uh, the border is red and the background color is blue and if I run this mm, okay I can see that the border took effect but it doesn't show right if I do not feel direct what happens well I can't see my style sheet so in order to apply style sheets to a custom button like this you need to initialize uh, using an attribute and that your attribute is WA style sheet to allow style sheet okay now if I run this you can see that my style sheet is applied still if I do fill my rec like that my style sheet is gone I can however draw on top of the style sheet so I'm just gonna change this color so we can see what I'm drawing and I'm drawing a little ellipse and you can see the ellipse there 20 by 20 inside our button okay so I added a few more styles here uh, just with a string and appending to that string with with plus equals and I'm just gonna hide this margin for now so I'm saying that background color is white and the color is red and up here if I draw an ellipse and I run this you can see that my lips even though it's a bit small right now my lips is red the thing is if I set a pen here to start drawing on shapes a yellow pen now my lips is yellow it overrides the style sheets so what what if I want to change my pen like uh, the thickness for example we can do this we can pick up the pen whatever that pen is we can set the width and you can see Q pen has a lot of you can check out the Q pen stuff and you can do a lot of stuff here in the Q pen so the painter has a pen we pick up that pen and that pen has the style sheet of color okay and then we reset the pen by saying set pen with that pen that we picked up and we can do the same thing for the brush if we need to change something in the brush okay now we got a cross pattern inside filling our uh, ellipse uh, we can see that we have some uh, spacing some margin around our button and this is because of the way that the box model works so if we look at the box model here you can see we have the margin then then the border and this is the margin that we have even if it's at zero pixels there's always, all, always a, a margin relative to the border and then you got your padding and your content so so if I start moving this increasing this margin and let me just do five pixels first you can see that my um, ellipse is trying is now it's still at zero zero but because I'm increasing the margin I'm increasing the size of the button let me go back to 15 okay you see what's happening here now if I use my fill rect again you can see what's going on uh, my my button is actually this size now but my style sheet because my style sheet influenced it with margin so as you can see there's a few extra steps that you need to take care of if you're allowing for your widget to have a, a style sheet so pen is the color and brush is going to be the background color you can bring back the text by saying uh, draw text and placing in the rectum uh, the rect that we get from event saying uh, align center just like we have in there and then uh, self text with draw text you can also do a different type of alignment for the horizontal 
and then the vertical so this would be the vertical and use different types of alignment like that so I'm saying self text because uh, we are in a push button push button and any Q abstract button really has text and in Q push button in the init function uh, the text is set as we did down here so this will give us our text and place it inside of draw text so now we have our text in there and it's red just like our style sheet is telling it to be to be red but now uh, my ellipse is red as well at least its border is red because its pen is is, is well it, it's that pen what I can do because my my text is already drawn I can now set a new brush like so and now we got a different brush for our ellipse I could also pick up our pen down here set its color and then reset the pen again now if I now remove this margin from here and I run it and let me just make this border a bit bigger okay you can see that my ellipse maybe you can't see it because it's a bit small but here we go we can see that my ellipse is on top of my text so how do I make my text go on top of my ellipse if I move my ellipse above my text now my ellipse is getting draw before my text and my text is going to be on top of my ellipse now the problem with, with that is that now my text is blue because I changed the pen now for cases like this we can use save and restore so right here I changed the, br the brush and I changed the pen so I can say painter save state save which will save the state then I can set the pen here and do all my drawings with my ellipse and then when I want to draw my text I can say P for painter restore and now as you can see my text is on top of my ellipse and it's red like we asked it to be in the style sheet so save and restore can be very helpful in that way a good practice when you're using style sheets is to let's look at this example just uh, as soon as we start our painter we can create a save state and then we can set our pen and draw our shapes and as soon as we want to go back to our style sheets we can do a restore and this will give us the same result we still have a background a white background like our style sheets uh, say here and we still have a red color like our style sheets ask for in addition to fill rect we also have erase rect so right now if I do a fill rect that would just fill everything there and with the erase rect at 20 pixels x y and width and height we would have an erase rect there and let through the background of the widget okay let's wrap up this video at and looking at what would happen if we use the Q abstract button instead of a Q push button I just changed this to abstract button and if I try to run this the first thing the first error that is going to pop up is that it doesn't accept a string so we can easily fix that uh, that's because we're push, pushing a string here into it so we can easily fix that by changing our initialized parameters and saying for example we accept text here uh, we're not going to initialize it with text uh, but whatever comes after that okay so we can't see our button yet uh, I'll get to that in a second but now to set our text we would need to do self set text and grab that text parameter that is being given to us what's happening now uh, my, my widget is not showing up okay and that's because we need render hints so if I overwrite the, the minimum size hint event with a queue size of 50 and 50 with an height and now I run this now my button shows up we can also specify the size hint and this would be the initial size that we wanted our button to start with so 180 pixels would give us this result and these size hints are coming from Q widget as you know Q abstract button inherits from Q widget so I'm gonna wrap this video up here I know I, I talked about uh, maybe looking at animation but this video is getting way too long uh, I'll make a 
a nice little video uh, next time about plugins how can you have plugins in your in your widget box and maybe there we'll do some animation on a crazy button uh, with different states with the hoover state and all that stuff so yeah i'll see you on the next video